Hello Internet, this is Gix, and I'm here to talk to you guys about The Elder Scrolls Online. Um, 34 years ago, roughly speaking, um, The Elder Scrolls Skyrim was announced, and um, I made a video sharing my thoughts uh, on uh, what I thought the game was going to be like. And this is mainly based on my experiences playing Morrowind and Oblivion and uh, my general understanding of uh, video game development. And I rambled on for hours. I think it was a total, if you combine all the videos together, maybe three to six hours long. And uh, I'll say three, not to sound too insane. But uh, a lot of people in, uh, enjoyed those videos. And some of you might have um, discovered my channel, my YouTube channel, um, by watching those videos. And since then, like, The Elder Scrolls Online was announced. I think it was a year ago, but I could be wrong. It could be another, like, two years. I'm, uh, it's a little blurry on the details like that, but, um, you know, a lot of people wanted to, like, Gix, uh, can you make another Thoughts video? I really, really want to know uh, what, you, what you think about it. And it's like, I kept pushing it uh, because I just really didn't care too much, to be quite honest. Um, there's a thing about MMOs that it's a very touchy subject, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking um, from a, a, a MMO player. Uh, I've played, obviously, World of Warcraft, and before that, I think my first massively online game was Neverwinter Nights because um, I don't know if you guys remember that game but there's a way to play on a persistent server although you know it's um, you know Bioware doesn't have like a server where you all log in it was basically just uh, player driven at that point so I remember playing uh, on a server that had maybe 64 players or something like that, if not more, like 100 people. So it's not like massive online, but, uh, excuse me, but it was one of my first multiplayer, like uh, more than just four co-op, essentially, where I had a world and it was persistent, I would log in, patches were made, stuff like that. Then I played World of Warcraft, I played uh, Guild Wars, I played Guild Wars 2, Warhammer Online, uh, Tabla Rasa, I played um, a little bit of Ultima Online. Uh, this is not nowhere near like in chronological order, but like, uh, what else have I played? I've played more than that. But, you know, um, I've dabbled in, uh, oh yeah, I've also uh, dabbled in uh, EVE Online. So, uh, I I'm not against the idea of, of uh, you know, MMOs. I love playing them. But I also understand why people could hate them. And especially when you consider The Elder Scrolls, which is primarily like a single player experience. Um, I love the idea of playing The Elder Scrolls in multiplayer co op. You know, two, three guys joining together, uh, doing some quests, killing some dragons, let's say, you know, looting. Um, that is ideal because one of the biggest problem I have with the Elder Scrolls is the fact that you can't really share your experience that you have with another. Like you can tell stories, but that's pretty much it. Or the other guy can stand next to you and watch you play. Um, I guess that's where the uh, the pleasure of watching Let's Play videos comes into. Like that, that's the only way to share. But when you experience a, a game, like, I, I'm a huge fan of the Diablo series, and one of the best experiences is playing with friends. I think that's the whole point of playing MMOs to begin with. Uh, but when I first heard about Elder Scrolls Online, my reaction was almost to, like, disbelief. Uh, because this was, this was after the whole Bioware... Star Wars MMO uh, fiasco. Um, to go way back when <laughs> Star Wars, uh, uh, which I've have not played by the way, I've I've had my roommate uh, 
show it to me, and uh, I was just not interested. I'm I, I like Star Wars, but I'm more of a tricky guy. Um, but the thing is, like, it did not appeal to me one bit. It's a it's Bioware. They make single player games. What the hell are they doing in an MMO? Like, they can hardly ever. They can hardly do uh, multiplayer games right, and I think the only one that they've got uh, to function properly was uh, Neverwinter Nights. Um, sequel wasn't so good, uh, and uh, before that was like maybe Baldur's Gate, and Baldur's Gate wasn't really built to support multiplayer. Like, yes, it was a feature, you could play multiplayer, but uh, I don't think I remember being able to do a complete playthrough without any bugs or without any problems with playing Baldur's Gate. So uh, I think I probably would have finished Baldur's Gate years ago if that multiplayer aspect, you know, would work properly. Um, but uh, that could have been an issue with the Mac port or something like that, I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, Bioware is a single player only company and they tried their hands on making an MMO and your skill set's just not there. Um, and the same reaction I had with um, Elder Scrolls Online. I'm like, well, I know it's not Bethesda who's making it. I mean, they're publishing it and it's, you know, their property. It's Elder Scrolls. ZeniMax making it, but ZeniMax... <sighs> ZeniMax Online, isn't isn't that a, like a, a group of people, a developer that just got created to make the Elder Scrolls Online? Like... What do they have under the belts as far as experience goes, as far as making games? It's like, I don't know. To be honest, I haven't done the research on that, but ZeniMax Online, to me, doesn't ring any bells. Um, so, and based on their, like, Square-like logo, I'm thinking, okay, that team was just designed to work on that, and it, I, that name, like, existed for a long time, so I'm thinking, okay, well, it took that long time to make The Elder Scrolls Online. But, then you have to think, well, how are they going to make an MMO out of that? You know, if multiplayer was an iffy subject, now you're talking about massively multiplayer, so that's strange. So I wasn't keen on the idea, and when, as um, more information got released to the public based on interviews, screenshots, articles, you know, what have you, um, reading those uh, bits of information just got me thinking about other games like I'm reading this document and I'm like I'm reading um, a pitch sale for um, Guild Wars 2 like they're talking about PvP and I was like this is Guild Wars 2 they're talking because it's like uh, three faction persistent server um, you know combat uh, a large terrain with capture uh, keeps and you know uh, resource camps and stuff like that you have some questing inside the, 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 the PvP map so it's like yeah okay that's Guild Wars 2 um, what else do they have like you know oh did they have first person I guess like to me a lot of the feature sets that I've read about uh, the Elder Scrolls Online just mimicked other uh, MMOs, and it's not a bad thing, you just gotta do it right, and I didn't think that the Elder Scrolls could ever do it right, um, and I thought instead of just bashing the game, or making a video talking about it, and just bashing the, the game was how I thought it was gonna be like, I figured, well, I'll, I'll give the benefit of the doubt, and wait for some actual results, you know, I'll play the game, and then I'll, I'll make uh, a judgment call on it. Uh, because you have to see it to believe it, I, I find. And even today, like when you read articles about the Elder Scrolls Online, I find that the media just doesn't get it. Um, it's the PC Gamer, uh, I don't quote, I'm going to paraphrase, because I don't have the article in front of me. Um, PC Gamer at one point wrote an article, and they said that the game felt too much like an MMO, and what? Sorry, but it is an MMO. Like, what did you expect? Like, so there is some downfalls for that. Um, I mean, they're expecting an M uh, Elder Scrolls experience. Well, yeah, but it's also an MMO. Do you have to blend them in? You can't just make an Elder Scrolls and just open the gate for thousands of players. It just wouldn't work. Um, so there was a lot of 
not just me, a lot of people just were skeptical about it. And I think um, people tend to just ignore something just because they just don't believe it'll work. Like Elder Scrolls Online, oh no, it'll suck. You know, it's just like any other MMO. You look at screenshot, yeah, it looks generic and blah blah blah. Um, and then you have Skyrim, where a lot of people hate Skyrim because it's dumbed down and stuff like that. So you can you just imagine Skyrim, which is a single player game, and then you think Elder Scrolls Online, which is a massively multiplayer online game, and you're thinking Skyrim is already dumbed down. How much? Dumbing down will Elder Scrolls. First of all, the whole concept of dumbing down, I think, is the wrong way to look at things. Streamline, yes, that's a word, right? Um, people don't make games to make them dumb, or they they, they don't to make it, <laughs> make it appealing for dumb people. Developers aren't like that, but you got to understand that a lot of people think differently, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute. But it's how to convey information that I think uh, s sometimes can feel insulting as a player, and sometimes it's just, I don't know. So, um, yeah, so I was very uh, skeptical about it. Um, and then I played the, the beta, and then my whole thought on it just went upside down and I think it's like the greatest thing ever well not necessarily the greatest thing ever but uh, I'm exaggerating here but it's amazing I find and um, I will definitely buy it I already pre-ordered it so um, yeah and I was gonna write uh, I was actually I was writing um, th thoughts like in a structure so that I can talk to you guys about it um, to make a video, but then the NDA got um, lifted on the game, and there's a beta weekend, and they're like promoting recording and streaming and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, well, instead of just talking about it with just my face taking the entire screen, I will just play it with you guys and uh, talk about the game as things are happening on the screen. I, I know I have a few things to talk about. Uh, that I might not be able to uh, show in the game because it depends on the events or the quests that I'm, uh, that I'm in and stuff like that, but um, we'll see. This in window mode, at least for the Mac client, this is, I, I think it's a bug, it's not even intended, but changing the resolution doesn't change, doesn't change the size of the window. So uh, I went from full screen to window mode and it was taking the entire screen and just changing these resolution like it didn't do anything like I had to manually resize the window to make it fit the, that resolution which is like I'm going by eye here I'm guessing that this is a proper uh, pixel ratio anyways so this is annoying so I might be thinking okay well this is on a bad uh, you know a rough start for the game um, <laughs> this is like Lord of the Rings logo um, if I ever see one, but you know, it, it has that Elder Scrolls feel to it. Um, but yeah, so far it's kind of rough. I'm gonna go through step by step of how I felt, uh, you know, uh, and how I feel about it, even knowing some of the stuff. And before, like, y you're going blind essentially, and then you go, okay, I, I, I sort of understand. So you got eight characters that you can play um, at a time. I don't know if you noticed, but there's no server selection. Um, this is what I tend to call, um, I'm not the only one actually, but like tend to call that selective multiplayer. So instead of selecting a, a server to play on with other people, what they've done is that you don't pick that. The, um, the server is selected for you based on your uh, location to get the best um, you know, ping available, and then based on your friends list and stuff like that, it'll populate your world. So if you got friends, your your odds of playing together are um, higher. And I say odds; I mean you'll see them in the world. But if you actually make a group, and um, and if they're not in your server, then you can easily teleport to them. There's no restrictions on that. So that's a cool th thing. If it's the feature, if, if I 
ever see one. This is one of the best ones for any MMO. Any MMO should be like this. It's annoying to say, oh yeah, yeah, I play the game too, but uh, oh, we're not playing on the same server. That kind of sucks. So I'm going to go through character creation. I'm not actually going to make a character. I just wanted to show you guys how it is and how I feel about it. Um, it looks pretty standard, you know, you see your doll and you see like how it would look like on, on different types of gear. Um, I've seen that multiple times, so this, this is okay, it's very standard. This is where it gets kind of weird. Um, you got three factions, okay? Um, you got the Daggerfall Covenant, you got the Aldrimir Dominion, and you got the Evenheart Pack. These sound familiar because, well, you know, they're part of the Elder Scrolls lore. I'm not too sure about the Daggerfall Covenant. It sounds like it's something that was um, labeled just for the sake of the uh, MMO, but I could be completely wrong. These guys sound familiar. Like, I know this is part of the lore. Um, and this is, um, story-wise, this game takes place years and years before any of the Elder Scrolls game, as far as I may know. Um, because Cyrodiil doesn't have an Emperor. So it's even before Daggerfall, I'm thinking. Ural Sipton's not even here yet. I could be wrong on a lot of details, but as far as I know, um, that's the whole point of the PvP aspects, is to fight in Cyrodiil and take, uh, make claim of the um, White Tower in Imperial City and become Emperor, and yes, players can become Emperors if they're badass enough to um, get there. So, this is, it's fine, um, they kind of separate, you got these nine races here, I don't know, this, is, this is the Imperial one here, these got these nine, nine races that are split into three factions, they call them alliances, but whatever. Um, and this is kind of bothersome. Like, I love the fact that, you know, at least it makes sense to, you know, these guys, you know, they live in the northern regions of the, of the Tamriel, and these guys, they live in the southern region of Tamriel. You know, you got the High Elves, you got the Wood Elves, you got the Khajiits, and, you know, graphically, they look pretty good. Uh, you know, the Co uh, Daggerfall Covenant, you got the Red Guards, um, you got the Orcs, and you got the Bretons, and then you got the Evenheart Pack with the Argonians, the Dark Elves, and the Norks. And it's like, okay, it makes sense. You're thinking, well, why are Argonians allied with the Dark Elves? Well, it's actually explaining the game how um, they're allied based on uh, convenience. I mean, the Dark Elves still have trust issues with the Argonians, and vice versa, and there's a, a couple of quests in the game that really highlight that. We are in words and treaties. The Moot might meet in peace, but we remember what the Argonians were like when we dragged them out of the muck. We know what they really are. I have no love for them. Do you hate fire for burning down your hut? The fire acts as it must. They saw our huts, and their nature required them to act. I trust a dark elf to act as a dark elf must. So it's really nice that they found a way to make this work. Um, I think the problem with this, because it works for PvP, but the problem with this is that from an Elder Scrolls standpoint, um, if you're known to play the Khajiit, like you've always played a Khajiit, so this is like your go-to race, whenever there's a Elder Scrolls that came out, like uh, from Morrowind, Oblivion to, you've always played a, a Khajiit. Well, what happens if your buddies are Bretons, and they've always played Bretons, or one of them is a Norc, so you're, you're not in the same faction, and you can't play together, you can be in the same server, you can see each other, but you can't quest together. And at best, you can kill each other if you're in Cyrodiil, because Cyrodiil is the only PvP area. I'll show that in a minute. Um, the only exception to that, so that kind of sucks, but the exception to that rule is if you pre-order the game. 
and that goes into like the little gray area look of ethics because okay you allow us to play a Bren in the Almiri Dominion or the Even Heart uh, Even Heart pack only if you pre-order the game. That kind of sucks. It, it, I think it adds way too much value to the pre-ordering, and it requires uh, fans to invest a little m too early without having, especially with the NDA to got like, I guess now you can do the, the you can base your judgment on what you see on the media and stuff like that because the NDA is lifted, and uh, you know. And uh, a lot of people are, are bound to make videos like I'm doing right now, uh, showcasing the game, explaining the game, and sharing their thoughts on the game. So you can, you know, make a judgment on that. But until you know, you're stuck. And you probably don't know. Like if you're, you know, oh, it's been a month, Elder Scrolls Online's out. Okay, I'm going to play with my friends. My friends, you know, they, they keep talking about it. I'm going to join them. You're stuck. You have to pre-order the game to get that, and if you pre-order the game, you also get access to the Imperials. And what that does is that allows you to play in any faction, so you'll see Imperials pretty much everywhere. What I do like about this is the fact that if, if you can think of something good about it, I don't think it's necessarily worth it, but it allows to have Bretons and Orcs, you know, in areas that are designed for Bretons and Orcs and like it splits the population as it kind of should be like if you play Morrowind you expect to see Dunmer you know and yes we'll I don't think you go in Varnfell in the game at least I don't think it's available right now but yeah you, you know you expect to see a lot of Dunmers in that area so it, it makes sense to not see freaking red guards everywhere right but there are red guards in Morrowind so that's how the player kind of filters out based on those who pre-order will be able to do uh, have access so it's like yeah i don't think it's worth it i think you're kind of frustrating the player base more than anything and then imperials are everywhere because they don't have a home can you imagine the imperials would could be like a pvp race you start in you just like max level and you just play in Cyrodiil because that's where you're at that could have been a cool thing to do uh but I like the fact that this game is... I, I guess they talk a lot about the PvP aspects of it, but I, I find that the game is heavily on the PvE. I'll most likely play both, but whatever. Um, so, I'm kind of disappointed, but I do like the at least the detail that they went through of splitting this stuff based on lore, and it makes sense. Like, I understand Argonians and Dark Elves, even though at first glance you're thinking, what? Slaves! But, you know... Uh, it, it makes sense. And then you got female, and you got, you know, and they look good. I mean, graphically, they look like Dunmers, right? I think the only one that looks kind of bad is, no, even these guys look good, man. They look like Elder Scrolls folks. I mean, I'm not thinking about Oblivion at this point. I'm talking strictly, like, this is a high-res version of a Morrowind model, the way I see it. Look at that. <laughs> so, moving on, you got the classes, and my first reaction to that is what? Um, multiple reason why I think this screen right here is so bad. The first one is probably the, the, the most obvious one is the fact that they got rid of character classes in Skyrim. Now, I know this, is, this isn't Bethesda that's making the game. Or, you know, why are they back? Like, I think I thought we already proved the fact that you don't need classes to play an RPG. It's a very archaic way to look at things. And not only that, but these classes aren't even familiar in their names. You got a Nightblade, and that's not even... Is that a class? I think it's a uh, birth sign, isn't it? No, actually, this is a, a class. Mixes, mixing magic with uh, sneak, uh, you know, stealth, blade, speed, that kind of thing. So, all right, they got this, and they got four classes. First of all, four classes. There's more th to it than that in the Elder Scrolls. But sorcerer, what the hell is this? What's a dragon knight? What's a templar? What am I playing in the Dragon Dragon Age Origins? Like, what is this? And you have 
all this space here to tell me what the hell that class is, and you're not even freaking. You, 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 no, what? What? It says here, these traveling knights call upon the powers of light and the burning sun to deal massive damage to their enemies, while restoring health, magicka, and stamina to their allies. That couldn't be more generic. Like, I don't know what I just read. Like, what is this class? What is a Templar? Could you sh show me some samples of skills, maybe? Like, if I have to make a character decision, like, right now, give me the information, right? I know this is still in beta, but uh, this is worrisome. And then you got the Dragon Knight. What the hell did the... These skillful master of arms use the ancient Akaviri martial arts tr uh, tradition of battle spirit and wield fearsome magic that pounds shatters and physically alter the world around them okay so i guess they're like the heavy hitters right but these guys also deal massive damage and you got these guys and sorcerer whoa sorcerers sorcerer why is it couldn't be called i don't know like a mage like traditional elder scrolls and destruction magic conjuration just just give me conjuration magic and that kind of stuff cuz i don't know does it say that it go, it does it doesn't even it's okay hurling lightning bolts creating electrical fields summoning tornadoes and impenetrable fog okay so you're playing a mage at this point, so you kind of expect... Th these are probably the most straightforward classes. Um, but, it, like... You'd think, okay, well, this guy's wearing cloth, so... I guess I could be a healer with this guy? Well, kind of. But if you want to be a healer, you want to play a Templar. Because, it, I guess it says restoring uh, health and magicka, and what, so you're buffing your allies, but... Look at what he's wearing, like, this is very misleading. Um, so my first reaction to this is that this part here is completely awful. They need to revamp this immediately. Um, either change the names or explain it better. Use that space to show me what they do. Like show me, like highlight some basic skills of each tree, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, you know. Over here, this is where it gets a lot better now. Um, the body. Um, d uh, change here, like, I'm all, I'll get one. right? You can go, like, very large. I can even increase the gut size even more. Like, look at this. You have a lot of customization. Like, if you want to play, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger here, you know, for the ladies, like, there's a lot of... Th this triangle is fantastic, and then you can, like, further... You know, hand size. This is very subtle. I love subtle things, though. I kind of see the hips. So it's like, you have that control, which I like. Some of it actually doesn't seem to be that obvious on this guy. But again, I am playing with a very thin dude, so I'm just gonna... So I love this, and I love the fact that you can lock them up, some features, and just hit random, and just create something completely different right I'm not gonna create a character I'm not gonna go through every possible um, graphical uh, options here but you know you got choices so I love this oh he's pointing something I don't know and then you got the face which goes back to the kind of meh uh, it's okay for an MMO I just especially with Skyrim I, I, I like to when I play an RPG, like, like in Elder Scrolls, I like to um, recreate my face into the game. I did that with Oblivion and I loved it. Uh, it was kind of hard at first, but I f found a way to do it with the sliders. Uh, Skyrim is a little harder. I don't think I can get a face that looks like me. And uh, I, in this one, I, I I've tried and I just couldn't do it. Uh, but at least they're good looking faces, they're not like ugly as sin, uh, like you could easily do in Oblivion, for example. 
Uh, th this character creation screen for the face resembles a lot more of the options that you would find in Skyrim. Uh, and then you just add the body, uh, you know, customization, which this is amazing. I, I love this part, right? So I'm not going to create a character, but I'm going to show you like how I manage. Like this is the closest that I've been able to recreate my face. So. It's it looks good, but it doesn't. Like I, I wish I could like make the nose slightly bigger and change the jawline, but of course I'm a Breton, so I have to match standard Breton, uh, you know, facial features. So it's all right. Like I'll, I'll accept, I'll play like that, but I was slightly disappointed by it. 